Hello everyone, this is Ronnie and this is my self-awareness project and presentation. So let's talk about my family tree first. So um, the Salvadors. My grandmother's side started with uh, Emeteria and Julio Patao, who immigrated from the Philippines to Hawaii in the 1950s. And then uh, my grandmother's, my great grandmother and father had my grandma, Nelda Patau, that immigrated to California along with her sons and daughters, but left my father, Romel, around the 1990s in the Philippines. My father, Romel Salvador, then immigrated to the United States in 2002, leaving uh, me, my mom, and my uh, brother and sisters. Uh, in the Philippines to work and make money but um, also an interesting fact I recently learned uh, from about a few years ago that I am part Hispanic and my grandfather is currently in Spain but um, no further information was shared and I got a little bit in trouble talking about this at home because they don't really want to talk about it but uh, here is a picture of the Salvadors. That's me on the furthest left. And those are my cousins and uncles and aunties. And this is a picture of us in Taiwan. Then the next would be my mother's side, which is the Ramoses. And my great grandparents, Benaventura Ramos, who is a U.S. Army prisoner of war during the World War II. And he survived the Bataan Death March, where they, uh, the Japanese military forced um, forced them to do the march and um, as prisoners. And my grandfather, Brenaventura, married Epifania Esteban and had my grandfather, Robert R Ramos, who worked on a different heavy labor jobs. Uh, my grandfather, Robert, married Catalina Facun, who is a daughter of Martina Domingo and Ambrosio Facun, who are farmers and laborers um, on the northern part of uh, the Philippines. My grandparents had my mother, Annalyn Ramos, who graduated as a nurse in the Philippines, but did not continue to work. And But she focused on raising us, her full, four children, because uh, my dad, Romel, immigrated to the United States. And here are the Ramoses, that's me on the rightmost, and um, yeah. For my family's religious backgrounds, my family uh, is mostly Christianity raised, which is influenced by the Spanish colonialism in the Philippines. Mostly today we are Roman Catholic dominant and we are raised to go to church every Sunday. But since we moved here in the United States, um, we've been, we haven't been in church regularly, but we still practice the beliefs of uh, Catholicism. My father went to Catholic school and I was being pushed to go to Catholic school while I was still young, but I refused to go and wanted to stay in public schools. My mother's side of the family is the same but they are more active with church in the Philippines and practices the same religion and norms. Now we can talk about languages. So um, the Salvador family speaks three different dialects, which is Ilocano, Batangueño, and Tagalog. The Ramos family speaks about four languages or dialects, which is Ilocano, Pangasinense, and Iloco, and Tagalog. With myself, I can speak five Filipino dialects, uh, which is or the ones my family is speaking, but um, my main language is Ilocano, which is the one we use at home. Secondary would be Tagalog or Filipino that we use, uh, that I usually use when I meet um, Filipinos that I haven't met before or uh, just the national language to connect with them. And my tertiary language would be English, which is still trying to learn and constantly learning and trying to improve every day. 
My main language, Ilocano, is a Spanish-based language. So if I do hear uh, Spanish, I can comprehend it, but um, the, the uh, it's, it does sound like Spanish, but it's more... Uh, the, the di it's like a different type of Spanish, but uh, most of the words are in Spanish. Then educational background. My father's fa family did not have any college education, but all did finish high school. My mother's side and her siblings all graduated college in the Philippines. And my family's belief is graduating college puts you to a higher status in life. Um, this belief, though, puts pressure to our generation. Uh, but my parents has always been supportive on whatever go goals are in or whatever goals we have in life. And that's a picture of me in kindergarten. And that's a picture of me in grade school, which I think I have about 40 medals um, winning quizbies. But that was on a different or past life. All right. My occupational background. On my father's side, mostly started on the cannery industry here in Alaska, and my grandparents are still in uh, that industry, including my father. Uh, my father works at Dutch Harbor, and my grandparents uh, live and work at Valdez, Alaska. Um, my mother's side and sib uh, her siblings, since they finished college, are more in the healthcare or office type of work, and but my grandparents did manual labor. Uh, while my grandmother's parents are far farmers. And that's a picture of me on my first years here in Alaska. Um, trying to follow the cannery uh, way of life with the Salvador side. But uh, it, I was working for about three years and realized that I want to do something else. Our family believes in health with health. Uh, my family strongly believes that health is achieved through eating vegetables and by eating certain types of vegetables as part of herbal medicine and supplementation. Our public schools growing up in the Philippines taught every student how to grow and take care of plants, including ways to utilize it in forms of uh, medications and food. And also, I was raised with traditional herbal medis medicine uh, to treat illnesses. And um, our norm in the family and our culture, we do not go to the doctor's office or dental office regularly um, unless we feel um, extreme pain or uh, ex extreme discomfort. Also, with uh, the, what ta they taught us in public schools, they focus a lot in uh, agriculture and gardening. So in public schools, uh, we spend two hours every day uh, gardening uh, during my grade school time. Family roles. Um, eldest sibling role is the one of the most common with us Filipinos or uh, within my culture. Um, being the role model is one of the biggest things since my uh, I did not grow up with a father figure um, close by since my dad immigrated to the United States. So um, there is some pressure to me as an elderly uh, or the eldest sibling to become the role model and not mess up. Taking care of parents when they become old is one of them too. Um, it's kind of one of the responsibilities of the eldest, but um, it varies. Um, sometimes it could be the the youngest as well. And also with family roles, grandparents still take a big part in raising grandchildren. And also that's a big part of a culture, uh, passing the culture to your uh to the uh, offsprings and grandchildren. Then music and dance. Growing up, my family always have supported me in doing Filipino indigenous uh, dances. 
since I was young and then um, up, up until now. The same with uh, my interest or my uh, family's interest with musical instruments. Me and my brother and uh, my younger siblings attend festivals regularly to play or dance for the community where, uh, where we were growing up. And then um, here is a picture of me for about four years ago in Cuba. And uh, there is a link below this picture that has that sample of uh, dance that we I usually do. It's called Tinikling, which is a national dance of the Philippines. It imitates a bird trying to evade traps in the rice fields. So if you if you want to check that out, the link is there too. Then music and dance, more pictures of me. Um, on, on the middle picture, that's me performing in the community. Um, some I forgot what dance what that is, but um, on the rightmost picture, that's one of our uh, uh, in, indigenous clothings or uh, traditional clothings. And same on the middle picture too. And on the left side, that's just me looking cool. And then let's talk about my background influencing my approach to care. So being a foreign born and immigrant, um, I feel like I'm being more compassionate and understanding to people who I can relate and connect to. Growing up in the, that means that uh, it's probably from growing up in the rural areas where healthcare is not really prioritized. Um, when I see patients, I understand that um, some patients who does not come in regularly for their routine uh, health appointment, I feel like it's my goal to influence them somehow in any type of way I can help them and educate them in a conservative manner, ke keeping in mind their values. Um, one of the biggest thing too is language barrier because I as an immigrant, I still have that language barrier. Um, and I still have a long way to go in learning the English language. And I use this, but I use this as a strength. Letting a patient know. Because so, some patients are uncomfortable in expressing or speaking. Because they don't want to be uh, misunderstood. And uh, this helps them. Or letting them know that... Um, I'm in that process of learning to kind of puts us on the same boat and make that connection um, with them that um, through things that we are both struggling with. Um, a life hack that I do sometimes when I see Hispanic, Asian, or Filipino patients that um, aren't comfortable or shy because they have an accent, I usually put, put on a strong accent in my English so that um, it kind of makes them more comfortable that we are on the same boat but sometimes it works for me but sometimes it doesn't but that's something that I, I usually do um, as a provider also another one would be um so I grew up in public schools where most of the kids are less fortunate and I was raised to be more fortunate and but to be more thankful of what I have and that giving away or sharing um, someone or sharing to someone would not make you lose something but gain something that only your heart could see and this is this gives us clinicians more compassion on our line of work especially in dental hygiene it means that we're not just in for the money, but mostly we're in to actually give our heart to help to uh, people who um, are needing some help or who is not aware that they need help. So, um, yeah, this gives us more compassion to, on our line of work and we'll try to help someone who is willing to accept our help. With this presentation and homework, I've learned that um, within my eight years here in the U.S., I've been starting to forget uh, the things uh, that makes me unique 
uh, including my culture. And um, I was thinking that it could probably be why. Oh, it's probably why. Because I was thinking what would others think of me. But um, my goal after realizing this, I, I wanted to relearn the simple things that makes us unique in our culture while learning other cultures as well to be more to be a more well-rounded clinician so that just includes um embracing what you like food and sharing your culture to others without being ashamed of it and that is my presentation and thank you for listening